In our previous tutorials, we talked about map, filter and reduce built-in methods. However, there is another expression in Python that is even more flexible than those. It is called list comprehensions. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss the following topics on list comprehension. List comprehension syntax, list comprehension versus map, list comprehension versus filter, enriching list comprehensions with additional for loops and the most important one, why you shouldn't abuse list comprehensions. Let's get going. List comprehensions apply an arbitrary expression to the items in an iterable. The syntax of list comprehension can be defined like this. Expression for item in iterable enclosed in a square bracket. Syntax wise, list comprehensions are enclosed in square brackets. This is an indication that list comprehensions are always going to return a list. Let's look at an example. If I have list numbers containing arbitrary numbers and I want to multiply every number with 2, I can write a code using three methods. In the first case, I can write a generic for loop that multiplies every element in that list with 2 and returns it to an empty result list. When I print that new list, I can have my results. The second way is I can define a function that takes in a number as an argument and returns the double of that number. Then I can use a map method and pass the list into the map with that function. Since it is going to return me an iterable, I will use the list method to convert it into a list. That's my second way of achieving my objective. Then there is a third way. I can use list comprehensions. Simply speaking, you can visualize list comprehension as a compact for loop. I can translate this for loop to a list comprehension by this expression x into 2 for x in numbers enclosed within square brackets. Now if I print the new list, I will get my desired output. Along with map, we can also have the functionalities of filter inside our list comprehension. Let's say I have an arbitrary list called junk containing some random numbers. I want to filter this list to contain only even numbers. Of course, you can use a normal for loop or a filter met method for this purpose. But you can also do it by using list comprehension. All you have to do is say x for x in junk if x percentage 2 equal to equal to 0. And don't forget the square brackets. It's very simple, isn't it? Not only that, we can also have richer iterations through our list comprehension. I can extend my general syntax from this to saying expression for item type 1 in iterable 1, for item type 2 in iterable 2 and so on and again enclosed in square brackets. We are going to get a better perspective on this when we get into our practical examples. Let's talk about replacing map methods with list comprehension. Here you can see I have a list called numbers and I have some random numbers inside it. All I want to do is return the square of every element in this list. So I can do it by two ways. One is by using for loops which I have done here and another one is by using map which I have done here. I have defined a function and then I am using the map method with the function name and the list. So if I run this code, you can see both the for loops and map method are returning us the same result. Now, I am sure most of you know how to do it. However, if you still have doubts, pause the video and go through this code. You will understand it very easily. Now, I can do this the same operation by using list comprehension. So let's go ahead and see how we can do it using list comprehension. All I have to say is result equal to x into x for x in numbers. So now if I print result, we can see that Python is going to return us again the same output. So basically this is how you would use list comprehension and replace map methods or normal for loops using the list comprehension. And as you can see, it's very compact and it's also very efficient. Let's now check out how we can replace filter methods with list comprehension. So here again I have the same list numbers uh, which has some random numbers and all I want to do is to return only even numbers from this list. So basically 2 and 4. 
I can achieve that by using for loops using this code. I can also achieve that by using this code using filter. Sorry, we are not using map here. We are using filter as you can see. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, pause this code right now and just go through this code. It's very easy. I'm sure all of you will be able to understand it. However, we can also achieve the same thing by using list comprehension. How are we going to do that? So here I can say result equal to again list comprehension square bracket and I say x for x in numbers if x percentage 2 equal to equal to 0. Now if I print result you can see Python is again going to return us the same result. So this is basically how you can easily replace filter methods by using a list comprehension. Let's go ahead and understand how we can enrich list comprehensions by using multiple for loop clauses. Now in my introduction, I already talked to you about the syntax that we are going to use for enriching list comprehensions and for using multiple for loop clauses. Now let's go ahead and use this syntax to solve this basic problem. The question is how many tuples of length 2 can be generated from the two lists that are given. And the condition is a tuple shouldn't be generated with elements from only one list. So the question is very straightforward. So how many tuples can we generate from these two lists num1 and num2 and basically the tuple should be like 1 comma 4, 1 comma 5, 1 comma 6, then 2 comma 4, 2 comma 5 and so on. Right? So we are not supposed to use the elements from the same list. So not 1 comma 2. So now I can achieve this objective by writing a for loop. So basically for number 1 in num1, for number 2 in num2, result.append number, number 1 comma number 2. Now if I go ahead and print the result, you will see Python is going to return us all the tuples that we can have from the both the list. And here we have 9. We can achieve the same objective by using list comprehension. So here I can say result equal to and I will say num1 comma uh, not num1 let's go at number 1 comma number 2 for number 1 in num1 for number 2 in num2. So basically if I now I go ahead and print result Python is going to return us pretty much the same list. So this is exactly the same result that we got from the previous for loop. So this is how you would actually enrich list comprehensions by adding multiple for loop clauses. Now I can also add some filter method to the same. So here let's say I want to return the tuples that are only divided by 2. So basically they would be uh, 2 comma 4, 2 comma 6. I think that's it right. So here I can say before result dot append I can say if number 1 percentage 2 equal to equal to 0 and number 2 percentage 2 equal to equal to 0 result dot append number 1 number 2. I can translate the same logic here in, uh, inside my list comprehension. For that I will say for, uh, for number 1 in num1 if number 1 percentage 2 equal to equal to 0 for number 2 in num2 if number 2 percentage 2 equal to equal to 0. Now if I go ahead and print this you will see python is returning us 2 comma 4 and 2 comma 6 for both the types for for loop as well as list comprehension. So this is how you would actually enrich a list comprehension. So this is how you deal with list comprehension. Now you can easily see the advantage that list comprehensions offer compared to map, filter and other methods. But here is an important thing to remember. Don't abuse list comprehension. Now most of your programming job is going to be complicated in general. Now just because you want to finish the entire code in one line using list comprehension, don't do it. It's very inefficient. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say you have two matrix A and B and you want to get a third matrix that is the product of elements in both matrices A and B at the same index. So you would expect something like this. 
Now this code is written by using a for loop and the second code is written by using a list comprehension. Now be honest about it and think. Going through the logic in this list comprehension is going to make your head explode. In your pursuit of trying to solve a problem in one line, you will complicate the code even further. This is very bad practice. So keep all of these concepts in mind and go ahead to Google Classroom using the above code so that you can start practicing with problems with list comprehension. Thank you guys. I will see you in the next tutorial.